I'm going to do something fun today. Yay, everyone likes fun, but I'm going to have fun at my own expense. I'm going to roast one of my first Star Wars YouTube videos. Why, you ask? Because it's freaking funny. So hopefully I can give you all a good laugh. But let's get to it. But first, you have to watch my way cool Star Wars intro animation. Compare it to one of my old ones in this video coming up. I have been every voice you have ever heard inside your head. So you didn't like The Force Awakens? Okay, hold on. Oh my god, that sound quality is horrible. Nor did you like The Last Jedi. Maybe your expectations were subverted. Ah, gee, you think? Maybe you just don't like J.J. Abrams nor Ryan Johnson. Whatever the reason, and there are many that divide the fans. You cannot deny the evil that is the return of Emperor Palpatine in The Rise of Skywalker. Oh my god, dude, where's the emotion? There's no emotion in this. I am digging the music, though. I wonder what I ever did with that track. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Do it. And leave a thumbs up for the video. Do it. It really does help me. <laughs> oh my god, would you look at that? Look at it, just look at it. Oh God, the helmet and whatnot. Uh, I do love the Palpatine do it stuff. I should have kept that in, but you know, you change things over time. But oh my God, the helmet. <laughs> Interact and engage with you all. This Palpatine was what we had all hoped to see in the previous trilogies. A man consumed by the dark side of the force. Um, I'm pretty sure we saw this Palpatine in Return of the Jedi. Um, at least something close to it, so, <laughs> yeah. Not just wielding it, consumed by it. The Emperor's Return has to be the part of the Rise of Skywalker I like the most. Yeah, okay, that shit's true. I do like that part of the Rise of Skywalker, but dang, I'm sure there are a lot of people going to hit that unsubscribe button right now. Don't do it. Don't do it. As Darth Vader and Boba Fett were always my favorite characters growing up, However, Emperor Palpatine was the one holding Vader's leash, and Vader was holding Boba Fett's, to a certain degree. So for me, the Emperor was the ultimate villain. Yeah, okay, that's some sound logic there, I guess. Man, my script writing sucked back then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not untrue, it's just... I could have worded it a lot differently, and I did not. I made it sound like total BS. And what the hell am I doing with my hands? That's just weird. Cold and calculating in his movements and manipulations. From the beginning of The Rise of Skywalker, it is put out there that Emperor Palpatine surprised us with a return. In the opening crawl, it mentions that our big baddie was behind the scenes. Yeah, maybe they shouldn't have put it in the opening crawl. A little bit of suspense would have been nice, I guess. I'm not knocking the movie. I'm just, you know, with every Star Wars project, there's something wrong with each one of them. And this was my biggest pet peeve. Why the hell did they put it in the opening crawl? Just let it play out. Then we see Kylo Ren finding the wayfinder that leads to the Emperor's hidden location on Exegol. Kylo Ren finds him and Palpatine tells him, I created Snoke. Oh my God, I just want to go back to three years ago, Gerald, and tell him, just shut up and dance. I mean, seriously, it's look, what it looks like I'm doing, because literally, I'm just standing there bobbing my head and moving my hands. I did the voiceover prior to that. Haha, -ha, secret revealed. Now, with a bit of the story out of the way, Emperor Palpatine looks, well, wicked. He's almost in a zombie-like state with his physical appearance. Hooked up to a giant life support that is reminiscent of a huge skill crane. Okay, hang on. Why didn't that joke work? Oh yeah, because there's no emotion in it. Jeez, man. Hit, hit it with the emphasis, you know, like a giant skill crane. Ugh. You see his clone shell is defective. Maybe it was the fact that the last time we saw him, he was chucked down a deep shaft into a reactor. Yeet! Okay, I'm watching this and I'm just thinking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
His body died, but he carried on somehow. Of course, we all thought he was dead at that point, but it seems not. It seems not. It seems Palpatine has returned somehow, thus bringing us more evil that existed in the first six films. Ah, shoot, just stop. He conquered what he set forth in Revenge of the Sith. He manipulated life and death. Not only that, he manipulated people into believing someone else was in control. Snoke. Now, oh, wait, 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 wait. So what you're saying is that Palpatine manipulated people in The Rise of Skywalker almost in the fashion he did in the prequels. No, that can't be. The entire galaxy was afraid of this supreme leader, and we as viewers, some I guess, believed he was a stand-in. Another big bad put in place to fill a role that didn't seem right. Okay, that there, that's a point that I still agree with. I just never felt like Snoke really belonged. It just felt weird. And that's no knock on Andy Serkis. He did an awesome job performing him. It just seemed like a, another big bad coming in to start trouble. Palpatine's appearance right away was that of a horror movie. I felt a cold chill, the same I would have felt if I had come face to face with Dracula or a uh, human-sized scrotum in his dark castle. His eyes were white, and parts of him were rotting away. His skin is gray. Okay, an old man's rotting scrotum, then. And every time the light flickered or flashed, his facial expression changed from sinister to deviant to more sinister. Some fans have a hard time with his appearance. He didn't look as distorted as he did in Return of the Jedi. Oh my God, way to make Southern folk look stupid. That is not my intention at all. You are all very brilliant people and you have an amazing culture. So don't take that the wrong way, please. This is true, but you have to remember, he was more of a dark side consumed zombie at this point. His clone body was decaying. Man, old Gerald was kind of pushy, wasn't he? Y'all don't have to remember anything if you don't want to. You can forget 15 minutes ago if you like. Don't let me tell you what to do. By the way, as the film progressed, Emperor Palpatine's appearance shifted. Once he pulled the life force from Rey, he was made to look more like the Emperor we all knew and loved from the days of yore. What? No, he didn't. Look at him. Look at him. Just look at him there. Look at him with the baggy eyes and whatnot and all the crinkled up and scrotum him like. He looks nothing like the Emperor from Return of the Jedi. What the hell was I thinking? Evil. Yeah. Looks evil. Looks scary evil. But the same? No. Uh-uh. Actually, I think he looks a little bit better in this. He had the glowing yellow eyes again, and he had the butt-cracked forehead. The difference is... Hold on, hold on. Stop the video. Stop it right there. All right, is it a butt-crack or is it a scrotum? And dude, the jokes. You need to get on with the jokes. Emphasize them. Like, say, butt crack forehead. Okay, carry on. The dark side definitely took its toll, even on his final aesthetic. His final aesthetic... What the hell? Just say his appearance. Just say his appearance is bad. And, yeah, I almost forgot what we were talking about. Thank you for bringing it back up. I have described how Emperor Palpatine manipulated other characters. Darth Maul, Count Dooku, Anakin Skywalker, and Anakin's alter ego, Darth Vader. Man, this is Star Wars. Need to lighten up a little bit. Loosen up. Get loose. You know, stretch out a little bit. You're acting like you had a funeral for your dead cat. Come on. Lighten it up. He manipulated an entire Senate and galaxy into welcoming him as the undisputed ruler of the First Galactic Empire. Now, he was manipulated Kylo Ren into luring Rey to Exegol. Now, I understand the point I'm trying to make here, but my God, the monotone, the, you know, the dance moves and whatnot. It's just, oh, I feel like I need to go watch bowling or something in an effort to possess her by giving hope to Kylo that he would rule the Sith Empire and the Last Order fleet. Obvious, right? 
Okay, that music is creepy, though. It just took a darker turn. I need to find that track. Maybe use it. Make a Star Wars horror story or something. I think that'd be kind of cool. He also manipulated Rey into giving herself to him to possess. Again, obvious. Emperor Palpatine also manipulated the Force. With the help of the Dark Side Acolytes, the Emperor returned from the dead. He learned the skill only known by his master, Darth Plagueis. Dun, dun, dun. Here comes Captain Obvious. He manipulated life and death. With all that being said, I feel like Palpatine is definitely the master of the dark side of the Force. And by split, I guess I mean I am the only one who agrees with it and everybody else does not. Okay, whatever. Let's get on with it. Now I'm going to say something that's probably going to make a lot of you mad. Who cares? Make them mad. It's their feelings. You can't help their feelings. Can't stop their feelings. Let them have their feelings. But don't worry about it. But I'm including myself in with this. We as fans of the Star Wars franchise are spoiled brats. We want fan service, but not too much. We want different, but not too different. We want a conclusion, but it better not be too familiar. Why are we so spoiled? Because a lot of us have been fans since day one. That's the reason? Really? That's the reason that we're spoiled. No, we're spoiled because we feel like entitled brats and we think that everything should be done our way rather than let the creators decide what's to be made. Ugh, that logic. We have almost 43 years invested in this franchise. Even if you're a newer fan of the prequel era, chances are, you had a parent get you into it. Sure, there are casual fans, but they aren't the ones complaining. Casual fans go to see Star Wars movie for the adventure and see where it goes, then come out of the theater like, cool movie, bro. Okay, is that really something we want to have said? We know casual fans don't get into the lore as much as we do. We know that they just go for the experience of the movie. They probably go to a lot of different movies. Doesn't mean they're 100% diehard hardcore fans of Star Wars like we are. We go crazy over this shit. Then there's us, the diehard fans, the fringe, the lunatics, the ones that pick apart every word spoken and dissect every meaning. Oftentimes, it splits the fan base. The return of Emperor Palpatine is no different. It isn't as widely disrespected as that of poor Jar Jar Binks. Ah, you poor naive fool. <laughs> yeah, yeah it is. People hate on it just as much. I mean, they may not go after Ian McDermott and tell him he needs to kill himself or anything, but they hate on it. But it's obvious the fans are split. Star Wars is very personal to all of us, and we lash out to anyone who disagrees with our opinions of it. Our theories get subverted, and writers don't go the direction we would have gone. All right, see, I see the message here, and it's not bad. It's not a bad message, but man, put some inflection in your tone, in your voice, you know, inflex, you know, hey, yeah, uh, you know, all that. Just get it out there. Spit it out. Show some emotion. For me, this is fine. If it fits all my theories, then it's too predictable. Back to Emperor Sheev Palpatine. Or Darth Sidious, if you prefer. Nah, I prefer Shriveled Scrotum. A lot of fans feel like adding him to the end of the saga made him a red herring or a deus ex machina. Something added in to explain it all with no clues given that this was going to happen. However, I'm here to add my opinion. Oh, by all means, let's hear my opinion. Why not? I mean, everybody's got one just like buttholes. Everybody's got one. Of course I am. I feel it was perfect adding the Emperor as the main villain, pulling all the strings from the beginning. Why? Because the first two trilogies were about the Emperor and his relationship with Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader. Hey, whoever you were that said that I was speaking in a monotone voice and that I needed to add some influx into it, thank you so much. Man, this is hard to get through, and I really need to stop asking myself easy questions. It makes perfect sense to show him manipulating Anakin's descendant. What I should say is descendants, plural. Descendants, 
Ben Solo was only one person. Okay, I'm going to speed this up a little bit. It's taking too long, and it's kind of hard to sit through, so bear with the rest of it. Yes, but this time, he finally manipulated Luke Skywalker, something he was unable to do in the original trilogy. He manipulated him into believing Snoke had turned Ben's heart to the dark side. Luke was unsuspecting of the Emperor's return. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. It really does help me generate new content. And be careful out there in these crazy times. And may the Force be with you, always. My boy, I made Snoke. Okay, maybe that wasn't as funny as I thought it would be, but, you know, it's the first one. So let me know in the comments if you want me to make more of these. I'll definitely do that. If you make fun of yourself, nobody else can make fun of you. And if I'm going to, you know, roast other people and haters and all that, then I might as well roast myself as well. Yeah, why not? But... Let me know what you guys think. And this is Gerald, a Star Wars fanatic, wishing you all great health, happiness, and peace. Thank you all for watching. And remember, this is the way. And positivity in the Star Wars fandom is the only way. I mean, seriously, what was with the hands? God, that was embarrassing.